Welcome to Trucking with Liberty. Today we are going to be continuing the series on the fuel economy for the truck that I've gotten in this uh, video. The uh, fuel economy will have changed quite a bit due to me losing the dedicated run I had. The dedicated run I had was light. It was about 10,000 pounds in the box. I haul a dry van trailer and pull it with the Freightliner Cascadia 2015 with a Cummins ISX. So today we are going to go over the fuel economy I've been getting and I still call it a win. It has went down overall but I call it a win because for one some of these loads I've had to do the speed limit in order to make it within appointment times as well as being close to max weight or being at max weight for the loads. So let's continue where we left off. Lost my dedicated, I lost my dedicated run in mid June, I believe. And also mid June, my truck was in the shop having the heads adjusted on, um, on the Cummins ISX. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start where we left off. Uh, May 5th, that was the last one that was entered for the last video before it came out. And I'm also going to have a playlist for this as I plan on every so often updating it. So this is also in a truck, started, well at least for this video, started a little over 600,000 miles. So can you get good fuel economy out of an old truck? Well, I mean a 2015, I'm able to. So let's get started. It, it's pretty, uh, this is pretty much going to be a review until mid June. 10s and 9s. That's pretty much what I was running. That 8, I probably was running 70 miles an hour for whatever reason. Um, the load I had, it was very rare that I had to do the speed limit, but that's the only explanation I could think of for that 8.3. But 10s and 9s, that's pretty much the name of it. That's 7.5. I'm fairly certain that was right after, that was the first feeling after I got the truck back from the shop. And they did idle it quite a bit. I assume that was, I'm sure they probably had to for whatever reason, I don't know. But they did idle it quite a bit. For instance, I know it was idling at least two hours before I picked it up that night. Um, but then we go back to 10s until they lose that run. So this 27th is probably the first um, fuel up I had after I lost the dedicator run and had to go back to the spot. And it does go down. I'm not even going to try to hide that at all. I mean the numbers are right here, you all can see. First fuel up 8.4. But to me, 8 or better, I'm happy with quite honestly. Um, variety of reasons why it would have went down. I do want to go to this one. Uh, this summer my Park Smart was down because of a broken relay that I didn't figure out was broken until just a week or two ago. Took it to two dealerships. You all probably saw the videos already. But long story short, don't trust the dealerships. Don't trust, unless you got a really good mechanic, don't trust the mechanic. Just try to get the stuff fixed to yourself. I mean, I, I wasted probably $1,000 between the two visits for a relay that they didn't even find. But this night, on the 1st of August, that fuel up, I did leave the truck running overnight. I had a, um, I had kind of like what Cash has, a uh, portable AC that was running, but because of the inverter, the loss, um, it only would last about four to five hours on um, on that Park Smart batteries. Now I will say, now that I got the AC fixed, I had it, that thing running at when it was 80 degrees out for eight or nine hours, and it never shut off. So that is one advantage of having at least a DC air conditioner. You don't have the loss like the portable AC running through an inverter has. And I think that's why that did not work as well for me. I think if I had it hooked up to the generator, it would have worked a lot better, honestly. 
I am a fan of that, but if you're trying to run it off Park Smart batteries, that conversion from DC to AC, it's too much law, too much loss, and it ends up not running as long. But you can see, I've probably averaged still at least eights. I still have some nines thrown in here. Um, this one is interesting. I consider this a win. 7.4 and 7.2. I was running 80 miles an hour. I had a load. I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. It was a load from St. Louis, Missouri, all the way to... I mean, it was even west of Oklahoma City. I forget the town exactly. But it. let's just say it was about an hour east of the Texas border. And I and then driving back, 7.2, that was going back to St. Louis, I believe. Um, and 7.4, 7.2, doing top speed at 80 miles an hour. I put top speed. So these run, this run, both of these, I did whatever the speed limit was. Missouri is 70, so I was doing 70 in Missouri. Oklahoma is 75 mostly, so I was doing 75 a lot. And then there were some 80 mile per hour stretches, not very long, I'm not going to lie. But there were some stretches where the speed limit was 80, and I did do 80. But I was on a really big time crunch, because if I would have went slower, I would have not got this load delivered on time back in St. Louis. But then after that, it starts going back up, 7.5, and then this last fuel up, I got... 10, um, almost 10 and a half miles per gallon again. It all comes down to fuel economy. I want to show you something interesting. Um, let's let's go this miles per gallon. This is since I got the truck. Um, 11, 11, 21 was the first fuel up. And look at my my miles per gallon. It's trending higher overall. I like that. Cost per mile. Fuel, so obviously we had this peak when fuel was at five or six dollars per gallon. Then downturn and then. I, this chart is very interesting because you would think it's going to line up just like this. Like here's the fuel price that I paid per gallon. You would think these two you could lay right on top of each other and they'd fit, but what's this? Mine's going down. But that's going up. Let's go over to the data. I find this very interesting. Let's go to the data. All right. So my last fuel up. Let's say 39 cents per mile is my cost for fuel. 39 cents per mile. It's at four dollars and two cents per gallon, and that's my discounted rate through mud flap on that one. So 38. 38 39 cents per mile let's go to here's my cheapest two dollars and 82 cents would you believe oh this this gets really interesting for a dollar 20 cents per gallon cheaper fuel I was only saving one cent per mile because this one I got 7.5 miles per gallon. We do not have control over this line. We do not have control over fuel prices. We could get the best discounts we could get, but if fuel is five dollars a gallon retail, you're still paying north of four dollars a gallon. We have very little control in the grand scheme of things over fuel prices. What do we have control over? We have control over this line and this line. If you improve the miles per gallon in your truck through, you could be through aerodynamics, driving habits, what loads you take, and when I mean what loads, I'm talking like light loads versus heavy loads. If you get this up, you'll get this up. And in some cases, you could get it to where you're paying just about as much for higher fuel as you were when fuel was cheaper. 
cheapest fuel 282 that I bought this year and I was only saving a cent per mile like granted this is kind of load specific but still I mean I'm using this as a illustration we have no control of fuel prices but despite the fuel prices we still could get really good cost per mile so that's my advice to you guys try to do things that increase your fuel economy that's the best thing you could do because in, in my opinion a hood truck is not where it's at whenever fuel is this expensive to me I'm kind of like cash I, I'm not going to hate you for having a hood truck, but I'm trying to send my kids to college. <laughs> so, in all honesty, I'm I'm wanting the fuel economy. So, these are the two charts again, three charts, if you want to see. And I also got a little treat for you guys. I'm not going to show it. It's going to be in a separate video. But look down here. I don't know if you can read that. DEF fuel economy. I finally got down to um, put entering all the data for the DEF usage I've had since shortly after I got the truck, as well as if fuel locks has actually saved me DEF. And when I mean saved me, I like increased my miles per gallon on DEF usage. Do I use less DEF? Do I use more DEF? Do I use the same amount of DEF since I started using fuel locks? That's the key topic we are going to be talking about in the next video. And I will have that come out fairly shortly, but right after I get done recording this one, I'm going to try to get that one recorded and get it scheduled out. So if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll probably put the DEF usage fuel economy in the fuel efficiency uh, playlist as well. So if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.